No one could ever have been quite prepared for the phenomenon of Jose Mourinho. He is a big character, he's very confident. He's a jewel in the crown, you know. Far too good looking to stand next to me. I think he's been a breath of fresh air to the uh, Premier League. He has brought magic. He's probably the only man I would leave my husband for. And he's probably the only man that my husband would leave me for. Something that this country maybe hasn't seen so much of. Almost a year ago today, Jose Mourinho was hired by Chelsea owner Roman Abramovich to win the medals to justify the millions. The image of Mourinho is one of an ambitious, cunning and at times arrogant man who would stop at nothing in his drive for success. But what's he really like behind that suave exterior? I've come to Chelsea to try and find out. Thanks for coming. Great to see you. Congratulations. Thank you. Not a bad start for no, the season. Not a bad start. And the interview, difficult? No? Is it? About you. You know about you. Chelsea have confirmed tonight the departure of manager Claudio Ranieri. Porto's European Cup winning coach Jose Mourinho is the overwhelming favourite. Mourinho is understood to be in a Porto tonight and is planning to fly into London tomorrow. Jose Mourinho took his first steps in Premiership management today and immediately started right from the future. I'm European champion, so I'm not one of the bottle. I'm a, I think I'm a special one. How did the, um, the Chelsea move come about? What, what first attracted you to the club owned by the billionaire the Abramovich? In, in, in my hands, uh, Chelsea and a big Italian club. And the next day of Champions League final... Can I ask you which one? They have a manager now. Okay. I think it's you not. don't have to answer. Yeah, it's not <laughs> difficult. They change manager every season. Okay, I'm, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so I had, I, I had to think. And I met... Um, uh, Peter Kenyon, Eugene Tenenbaum and Roman in, in Monaco. And I, I like very much what, what they told me. The prospect of, of the future, very objective. Uh, Chelsea is not the best club in the world. Chelsea won not a, a premiership for 50 years. We want to win, we want to repeat, we want to create conditions for the club to be best club in in country, best club in the world, big ambitions. And uh, do you want to be part of, of it? And because it was the first meeting I had, and because I liked so much the way uh, they approached me and they proposed me a future with Chelsea, I told to, to George Mendes, uh, forget, I, I, I want to join them. Marino crashed into this country like some sort of foreign asteroid. I'm always confident. You have a top manager. He does enjoy being an actor in the drama. I'm never nervous. I'm an angel. You had something about him where you thought immediately Tablo is going to love this guy. I arrive here with my ego. <laughs> <laughs> he's amusing, he's charismatic, you know, he cracks good jokes. <laughs> he kind of sort of oozes power. You don't know me. You know me from half an hour every week. I'm not interested in myself, in my image, in what people think about me. You want that, not me. No faces that I say, I don't like that face or I don't speak to to this paper or to this television. I think the press have fallen in love with Jose Mourinho because he gives as good as he gets. The press doesn't love me so much, but... but uh, <laughs> Forgive me if this isn't just not very British. Do you think you're misunderstood? But I think I'm guilty. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm guilty of that, so I cannot Yeah, because I people say, well, wow, he's very confident. Oh, he's arrogant, the same sort of thing that they would say. Yes, very confident I am. Arrogant, I don't think I am. No. But sometimes... I, I, I feel I need to be like that because I think sometimes I need to play a little bit with, uh, with emotions. Uh, I can be speaking with you, but I know that uh, my players are watching. Uh, <laughs> players from other teams are also watching. And, and sometimes so we it's can... it's a bit of an act. Yes, it's a bit of, it's a bit of an act. I know him very well and uh, maybe he gives the impression that he's a little bit arrogant. But uh, if you talk to the players and what I heard from, from the Dutch players like Robin in, in Chelsea, he's not an arrogant person, he looks like. But he's uh, come from Portugal and uh, they have uh, a little bit 
the south of Europe uh, mentality and uh, more emotion. When you, you are in a press conference before a game, after a game, you know, before a game, the game starts there. Mm -hmm. And after the game, the game didn't finish yet. Uh, finish only game. with the press so there, conference. There are games within a game. Yes. So you, I think you have to, 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 to act a little bit and to show sometimes uh, a, different, a different face. And, and I think I'm, I'm not bad with it. Most people in this country wonder what it would be like to work for Roman Abramovich. Is he, does, he, does he interfere? Does he want to know what's going on? Yes, he wants to know. Mm. But, but I told him in the beginning because one of the funniest things was um, when they met me, they were saying, um, not Mr. Abramovich, but Peter and Eugene, they were saying to me, we are a little bit afraid of your personality, you know. And I was saying to them, but afraid why? <laughs> afraid why? I, I, I'm Mr. Abramovich. Uh, your personality is personality. And I thought, what he wants? Win? <laughs> I want to win. In Jose Mourinho, he's finally found a kindred spirit. Very different man, uh, a very uh, quiet billionaire Russian owner, takes on this hurricane from Portugal. But you can't deny that Mourinho is a winner. You speak a number of um, languages. Um, how's your Russian? My Russian is about the... The dirty words, <laughs> <laughs> just just about that. But uh, I can understand uh, the, the emotion. I don't understand the language, yeah. but I understand the emotion. And before the translation, I think I can work it out. Yes, I can work it out. <laughs> Does he understand football? He understands football. He loves football. He hates football. You know, he's, he's a person to be in a weekend and to see me on Monday and to tell me, did you see... Uh, Barcelona, Sevilla? Yes. Uh, <laughs> did you see Lyon, uh, Monaco? Yes. Uh, did you see Roma, Inter? Yes. And I think, what, what you did in the weekends? <laughs> you know, he, he, he eats football. <laughs> Jose's philosophy is to win. And uh, I think he knows what nice football is, but he'll, he'll win anyway. He'll win ugly. He gets his point across very well. And the players, when we go out to play on a Saturday, we know exactly what we have to do. That's everyone, from the goalkeeper to the strikers. Um, we know exactly what we have to do, and we know how to do it. And I think that's been the main reason we've, we've been so successful. In terms of the way you like football to be played, and, and what was necessary to bring success, what, what would you describe as your style? Some people say Chelsea are a bit more defensive than the others. Or... No, no, no. I, don't, I think Chelsea went through phases. And uh, the first phase was to give them um, tactical discipline. You cannot play just emotional, and I can understand English mentality is a little bit about, about that. And I want to show that I don't want to lose matches. I want to get the maximum points in, in the beginning and uh, I want to show that it's not easy to beat Chelsea, it's not easy to score against them. Step by step the team was, was, was getting strong by the tactical point of view but strong men mentally, mm. very strong. They were feeling uh, the power. We score one goal, we don't lose. We can go away of home, don't concede goals. Clean sheet after clean sheet. After four or five matches, boring Chelsea, <laughs> they don't score goals, uh, they don't play football, the football is a disaster. And I was feeling, what is this, where I am, you know, I, I, I just arrived. But I got that in the good way. I was saying to the players every time, uh, they don't like us because we win. Your team one year ago, two years ago, they love your team, but you won nothing. <laughs> now they hate us, but we won matches, so we are okay. And it was important to close the dressing room door and to say what is outside, what they say about us, doesn't matter. The criticism, I think, was good it got to, to you create a, bit, though, a strong it? group. Yeah, It got to you. You didn't like so, it, did you? No, no. I didn't like because I think at that time, uh, one of the reasons why I came to England was also because people in this country understand a football team is a process and they give you the time. They don't give you... Not at all clubs. Yes, but normally, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, but you go to Latin countries 
you don't get results after two two months and you are out, you have no time to work. And I thought, I will have time for that. So you didn't Waiting. like the criticism, but you sort of yes. understood it. No, I understood that we must go to another level. But I was waiting for Robin. I was waiting for Duff. I was uh, waiting for the improvement of, of Joe Cole. And I was waiting, but getting points. And when the players were, were back, the, the main question was both at the same time or one each time, Robin and Duff. Mm. But you changed we, your system for that, didn't you? We changed because of, because of, because of that, because they were so good. Chelsea! Oh, yeah, Robert! You've pitted your wits against um, two others that have played similar games over the years, usually against each other, Arsene Wenger and Alex Ferguson. Mm -hmm. um, it's nice to have a third member of that team. Do they want to change their position with mine? Top of the league with nine points. They cannot speak about blips because they are not in a better situation than us. Do you see a, a psychological war between you and no. the other managers? I tell you, I tell you, can, you can ask to Sir Alex. I have a lot of respect. I call him boss because he's, the, he's, he's our boss. So no problems, no wars, no mind games. When we go to Man United, I will bring a very good bottle of wine because the wine, the wine we drank was very bad. These two are very similar. Uh, in that they're mind game players, um, they're intensely competitive. You seem to get on better with, with Sir Alex than you do Arsene, is that, would that I be like true? I like him very much. I like him. I think, uh, I think he's a person to, to have a fight with you, a words fight. Or, um, it it never, never happens. It happens once with Porto, uh, a little fight during, during the game. But he's a person that the game hands, everything hands. Come to my room. I go to your room, uh, share a glass of, of of wine, and we speak open. And I think he's he's he's, he's a very correct person. And um, but but he Arsene teaches me Wenger, a few things. To be Arsene fair, Arsene Wenger it seems a little bit different. There's a bit more sort of bit of spite there. I'm not worried with that, you know. I'm not worried with that. But for example, when he says uh, he liked uh, much more other um, Chelsea teams than our team, I know why. Why? Because we are champions. I, I have to be fair, I didn't like Arsenal in the beginning of the season, where they smash everybody. I don't like them now, where they beat uh, Everton 7-0 and they have... Why don't you uh, like that? Because they win. Oh, OK. I like them very much in the middle of the season. Every weekend they lose points. <laughs> I was in love with them. <laughs> you know, every week Chelsea wins, they get a draw. Five. Next week they lose eight. Next week they lose ten, eleven. I was in love with them, so I understand why you don't like us. He's done some very smart things, and the best thing he did was the first thing he did when he got to Chelsea. He got rid of ten players because nothing can be worse for a coach than having too many players around the place. Better to have too few. And that's what he left himself with. He left himself with a quite a lean squad. I think the club have been very, very clever and they brought young, hungry players who are ready to fight for each other, who don't want to be the hero and don't want to be, you know, the main man or anything. We, all we want to do is play for each other and, and, and win games for Chelsea. The boys all think he really knows his business as well, if not better, than any other manager they've encountered. And so their commitment to what he creates and designs for the manner and the form of play and the tactics and so on, they absolutely accept as it. And what he wants, they will try and give him. The result is, of course, we have a phenomenal team this year. I think that winning the championship might have surprised him. I don't think he was sure he could win it in the first season. I think by Christmas, all doubts had, in his mind, as in all of ours, had disappeared. When did you think it was your title? I thought <laughs> in many occasions, August. Some, something <laughs> happened after that, something happened after that where you think it's not over. But uh, I, one, one period is when, the, a moment I, I never forget was we beat Tottenham away, uh, we jumped from five to eight. And uh, Arsenal played uh, two hours later in Bolton. So we come in the bus with eight points 
and I was thinking this can go from a two to seven. Yeah, a draw yeah. is, is is good. They lost, so our buzz was was a circus <laughs> for the first time. They won the one nil at Tottenham when we lost at Bolton just one nil. You transform that hope into belief and then uh, conviction that you will really make it. And then uh, you just take off and they got that. Everybody jumping and screaming, eight points, pa pa pa. And that moment was a moment where I thought, ooh, eight points, eight points. You can make a mistake, you can control the emotion. They will lose also a few points. Uh, was was a, a moment where I felt it's very, very difficult to, to lose the championship. Lampard, it's 2 now. it's Chelsea's championship. Jose Mourinho grew up a long way from the Kings Road lifestyle he lives now. He was born 42 years ago in the fishing town of Setubal, south of Lisbon. The son of a professional footballer, the game was always in his blood. Well, about uh, 35 years ago, Jose was five, six, seven years old, and uh, was father was the goalkeeper from Vitoria. And in the trainings, uh, his father was there defending, and Jose was in the back of the goal. And all the balls that uh, go go out, Jose will get them and bring it to the to the pitch again. So the, some some part of his youth, as a child, was passed here in this seeing the trainings of his father. Your father was a, a goalkeeper. Yes, Felix was his name, and. Yes. Um, he was quite good, wasn't he? He played for the international. Yes, he was. He played all his career in in the Premiership, in the Portuguese Premiership. Felix Mourinho is a nervous dad when his son's games are on television. So much so that he leaves the house while the match is being played and waits for his wife to ring him with score updates. Eu vivo essas vitórias intensamente, talvez até mais, mais intensamente do que vivia do que vivia as minhas no no tempo em que jogava. You weren't a goalkeeper, were you? No, I uh, when I was when I was uh, a kid, I think I like every kid, I want to score goals, you know, and uh, I was feeling good enough to play, but not good enough to to succeed or to achieve a good uh, mm. a good level. I remember he was player in Balnes in Vitoria Setubal. Ooh, good technique, not uh, so fast, but um, good skills. But uh, I think uh, always also studying and uh, making investment uh, as a student and to see the future. Your father became a coach yeah. and you played for him. Was, was that difficult? Oh, I was with him just one season. Yeah. was the season where at that period in Portugal you could never go direct from high school to university. There was always one year mm -hmm. where people had to be waiting for a university. Year out, you yes, a year out. Yes, a year So at that time... I was um, playing with 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 my father, my father team, and um, there was, was a bit waiting. of controversy, though, wasn't it, about whether uh, whether he should pick you in the team or not? And it I think is 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 a situation. Depends of culture, you know. Depends of culture. I have to say that this season, when I saw Jamie Redknapp to play to his father, I was I was in love with that team <laughs> because it was a feeling I I I I could never had the son helping his father was was bad for me was bad for me, not bad for my father, was bad for me, because... Uh, in what sense? In the sense where uh, I should play more. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't, because uh, his options were, were always against the controversy. Mm. And I was the first at that time, I remember a few times, to tell him, uh, I know I deserve, but forget it. Uh, forget it, go the other way, it's I'm with awkward. you, and we go to the, to the easy way for us. You said yourself that you realised relatively early that you were not going to reach the very top mm -hmm. level. Was that... Difficult for someone no, with your personality no, no, to deal no, no, with. No, was not was not difficult. You know, was not difficult. Um, at that time, was was uh, I was already in love with my wife. You know, and and uh, uh, waiting a few more more years to just to marry and to have my wife my my life uh, organized. And at that time, things went into a a comfortable direction. You know, I was uh, a school teacher in the morning. So I had my my stability in the afternoon. I was coaching uh, um, my city team, Vitoria Stubal, in uh, sub-18. 
In his early 20s, Jose realised he would never achieve great success as a professional footballer. As a student, he took the first steps into management. I remember that uh, me and then some friends uh, went to some games and sometimes we, we, uh, we tried to, 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 to joke with him, you know, Jose, do that, do that. He never hurts, you know, never. Was only that, he don't hear only the game. That's when I understood that the guy, you know, is completely focused. At that time, there, there's no world. There's only football, you know. Jose went to university in Lisbon and took an academic approach to his study of the game. Jose Mourinho was a very good student because he, he, he loves football. So in that time, he always showed that uh, he wants to know uh, many things. He starts uh, uh, the, the, the motivation and uh, the interest that he, he shows all the time. He's a product of study. He's read and he's worked and he's learned. And he, he said it's taken me 15 years to become an overnight success. Do you think it's any coincidence that, say, for example, the top three coaches in, in this country at the moment, yourself, Alex Ferguson, Arsene Wenger, none of the three of you were particularly mm -hmm. great players. Um, I think Alex might possibly disagree mm -hmm. with that, but um, n none of you played at the very top level. Um, do you think that perhaps helps in some no, way? I, I had time to prepare my career that a professional player didn't have. Mm. So if you jump direct from I was a great player to try to be a manager, I think you are not ready for. Difficult. You know, it's difficult. Mm. The same way you can study all your life, but if you don't have a, a strong connection with the world of football, you are not ready because you go into that world and you can know a lot about uh, all the science connected with football, you don't understand the game, you have no chance. Football may be a universal language, but Bobby Robson needed a translator when he moved to Sporting Lisbon. It would be Jose Mourinho's first job in the professional game and the beginning of a successful partnership which lasted five years. When Bobby Robson stepped off the plane from London to become a coach at Sporting Lisbon, the little guy who greeted him said, Hello, I'm Jose Mourinho. Is possible? He was initially employed as, as an interpreter. That's how he started working with players, really, and sort of got a grinding in the game. He had an air of, of, of confidence about him. I think he was a bit nervous about meeting me. I mean, I could add detect to that. Is it true that you were? Bobby's interpreter? No, the true, the true is that uh, I was his interpreter, I saw, I was his scouts, I saw players, I saw teams, I, I was go keep a coach wow. because we didn't have at that time. I, 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 I helped in training sessions, I think I, I was everything, I gave him everything, everything I had I gave. So I think uh, as a, um, a very nice person, he recognized my, my contribution to him. Hey, 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 Fleming. I couldn't have handled it really uh, without him in terms of speaking to the players, having a liaison with the players, having a liaison with the president. Uh, never, never fell out with anybody, always respectful. Uh, epitomised what I said to the players and how I felt about the game and the way the team played and what happened, what didn't happen. And he could transmit that very fluidly and respectfully. He was, he was super. I'm not going to go to Barcelona, am I? Uh, Ill prepared, unless. I know taking Jose is going to be an advantage to me and to Barcelona, and of course for himself it was wonderful. Many years with, with Bobby, what did you learn most from him? I, I learned a lot of things, you know, but the first thing I, I get from, from, from a person is the human being he is, you know, and, and uh, I think it's difficult to find in football. Uh, such a beautiful person like uh, like he is, and the way, uh, of course, we are different, and I, I don't want to try to be copies of anybody because copies are always worse than the original. But uh, he was good in train. He was very enthusiastic. You know, Sir Bobby. Uh, Sir Bobby loves the pitch. He loves the pitch. So as an assistant, you work in in other areas to support that, mm. but not so much that direct relation with with the coaching session. Because Bobby always liked to yeah. take sessions. Very studious, 
asked questions all the time, saw the players train, saw how we trained, saw what we did in training, learned, listened, looked, remembered, did all of those things. Look where he is now, absolutely fantastic. He brought me from, from a low level to the highest level you can, you can imagine. So as Bobby assistant, I, I went from Sporting Porto and Barcelona, and when I left Barcelona, I was, I was ready to, to start my career. It was, that was your first period of, of a lot of success because yes. you know, a lot of trophies in, in, in both Portugal yes. and, of course, Spain. Yes, with, with, with Bobby, it was fantastic. We won everything in, in the Portuguese competitions, uh, two leagues and uh, one cup, two Super Cups. We went to Barca. Uh, in Bobby's uh, period, we were not champions, but we won Cup Winners' Cup and uh, Spanish Cup, Spanish Super Cup. After uh, Bobby Robson was at Barcelona for, for one year, he yeah. moved upstairs. Now, yeah. normally in those circumstances, mm -hmm. his staff can perhaps be moved away and moved yes. outside, but you stay with, with Van Gaal. Yes. Was that a, a surprise? Or? Uh, the personalities are, are different, but uh, I have to say that uh, Van Gaal is also a beautiful person. You know? He's somebody with, uh, I don't say two faces, a little bit like me. I, I think he's a little <laughs> bit like me. You know? In what he shows, sense? In the sense where only people who know him well knows who he is. Mm. Luis loves to analyze and gives you the complete control of the training session. So you, you become with him a coach on the pitch. So you coach players. So when I was uh, 30, 32, something like 34, I don't remember that, but very, very young to be, to be a manager, you have on your hands Rivaldo, Ronaldo, <laughs> Figo, Stoichkov, and coach them. Tough to teach them. It was fantastic, fantastic experience. And, and with them, I got something that still is very important in my methodology, is, is communication. Is to get feedbacks also from them, from the players. And Luis, I think I created with him a very, very strong uh, relation. And it was very important also to give me uh, confidence. You mm -hmm. know? I, I always remember with him. Uh, Have you ever lacked confidence? No, but, but he, he told me things very important for my career. I, I never forget this. Benfica president called me and he said he say to me, uh, you are in, 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 in Barcelona, I want, him, I want you in, in Benfica to assist uh, you, you Pankas. I, I, I told to Luis, Luis, happened this. I received this phone call and I have this big chance to go home and to have a good situation for me. He told me, pick up the telephone, and tell Benfica president, if he wants you to assist you Pankas, no. If he, wants to, if he wants you to be the manager, I take you to the airport and you go. Mm. Because you are ready for that. No, no more assistant. When you leave me, it's to be, to be top manager. So I have a few memories of my relation with Luis, and it was, it was very important for me. When a call came from the biggest club in Portugal, Mourinho had to take it. Benfica were looking for a new boss and Jose was ready to take the step up as manager. When he eventually left Portugal, he'd won every title going, including the Champions League. When I, when I left Barcelona, I was completely focused on, on being, a, being a number one. Being a number one, you know. Your first job was as a number one was, was Benfica. Yeah. And that went a bit sour quite quickly, didn't it? Oh, it was amazing because... Uh, um, when I went to Benfica, uh, was uh, a period of election coming in three months' time. For the president? Presumably. For the president, yeah. Well, I met uh, Jose Mourinho in Barcelona by, by chance, and uh, I spoke with him. Uh, it was enough five minutes. After talking with him in five minutes, I said, well, this is a completely different man. Uh, this is a, a unique uh, personality, and uh, I said, well, He's the right man. I went in October and the elections in, um, in December. And uh, the president couldn't give me a long-term contract because of that. He was saying it was not ethic. He can lose elections and the new president comes and uh, I gave you a five-year contract. I cannot do that. So you have to, um, to accept the short-term contract. It was a big risk at the time because Benfica was in a sort of a process of elections and uh, even my board, all my board resigned. Uh, but it was really difficult. The press was completely against and said a lot of silly things, said that Mourinho was only a translator. He lost the elections 
a new president uh, arrive. So when he lost the elections, I knew at that time I have no, no chances because he has his own, his own man. So I was, uh, I was succeeding. The results were, were very good. We just finished to beat um, a Sporting in the derby. We beat them 3-0. And uh, at that time, I told the president, it's time for you to make a choice. Or with this kind of results, you give me the new contract and I can know I'm working for the future of, of the club. Or if you still stick with uh, your first choice, I, have to, um, okay. I have to go. So people at that time couldn't believe such a young manager was, was leaving Benfica. Yeah. You know, because I left Benfica, you know. And you went to you went to a small club called yes, Leiria. Leiria, yeah. And um, maybe the first signs of, of um, the special one, you took them to the UEFA Cup, which was quite we an achievement. We took him to, to the third place. It was a very small club. At that time, it was, was not easy for me. Uh, for the first time, I left my, my wife and kids in, in Lisbon. Not with me, because it was not a, a good place to... To take them with with me, I just there focused in. I have to succeed, and I have to go back quick to to my to my previous level. So I went there uh, with my staff, just thinking about about that, and um, I went to Brazil to find players with peanuts and bananas, you know, <laughs> no no money. So I got players for uh, one hundred thousand euros on loan, this kind of of, of situation, and. Uh, we did, we did fantastic, so we were third in, third in the table. In the end of the day, I had uh, Benfica and Porto fighting, fighting for me. Mm -hmm. The president that doesn't want to give me the <laughs> long-term contract was fighting, was fighting for me. The same guy. The same Mr. guy. He's fantastic football. Yeah. Yeah. So, but you went to Porto, mm -hmm. and um, when you took them over, they were struggling. Leiria was third and they were fifth. Yeah. And, and for Porto to be fifth and... Uh, Struggling to get a UEFA position was was incredible. Was incredible, but we won everything in the first year. In Portugal, um, is is simple. You have a very good team. You win the championship. No, no doubts. Eu tenho certeza que no próximo ano. So it's easy for me in Portugal to say, uh, as I as I told in Porto, beginning of season, we will be champions. No risk. Second year was, was even better because we repeat the Portuguese uh, trophies. We just lost the, the Portuguese Cup final. We lost in extra time and um, we won Champions, Champions League. Probably he will re regret the, the, for the rest of his life that he didn't celebrate with, with Porto the, 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 the victory in Gelsenkirchen. He didn't, you know, he, he, uh, he stepped away from the, from the field and he and here in Porto, he didn't even come out from the airport. But uh, the important is that he, he achieved great things in Porto. He's a, a great coach, and I'm absolutely sure that no, no Porto supporter would, uh, would think twice if, uh, if he had the possibility of, of return. We did it almost without money, because uh, I took to, to Porto uh, four Leria players, so my my peanuts players, we, <laughs> we sold them to Porto. So we, we, we built a great team with, with, with Porto. And just with, with quality and confidence and working hard to improve the team. And that's and it, step that's by step the, was and fantastic. that's it, is it? That's all there is to it. The yeah. confidence, working hard. Yes, and quality. No quality, no chance. And you have to believe you can score. My life is about keeping one step ahead. He's one of the first managers I can think of that has really made it into the, the feature pages of, of newspapers. You know, we're used to seeing, obviously, the, the David Beckhams and the Jamie Redknapps, the, the, the handsome players. But, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I've never seen a, a fashion item about Sir Alex Ferguson. Jose Mourinho has made that transition. Mourinho's up there with Beckham, with uh, Zidane, with... Raul, you know, he's as big a star as many of the world's great players. Certainly at Chelsea, I mean, he is probably the biggest star they had. Uh, the biggest box office, he's probably the highest paid member of that staff now. Uh, he's a phenomenon, but he's a winner. The, the looks factor is, is sort of almost the factor that they're not speak its name. It's sort of considered rather crass to, 
uh, think that because somebody looks stunning that uh, they have a special quality. He has that sort of permanent sort of five o'clock shadow. He's got very sexy eyes. He's got a very sexy manner about him. He clearly fancies himself. Clearly every woman I know fancies him, which is even more depressing. And he's totally gorgeous. So I'm not content with just being a football manager, a fashion icon, some sort of sex god. We then see Jose trotting over to Israel to cure the world of the Middle East peace problem. Jose Mourinho is here as a guest of Shimon Peres, Israel's deputy prime minister. I think football is powerful in social terms and um, a football man becomes powerful in social terms. I accepted that uh, invitation to go to Middle East because I'm not a political man but I know that was for children and children uh, with a lot of problems as consequence of war so I always will be ready for that you must use the power football gives you you must use in, 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 good, in good situations for the world it hasn't all been good news for Jose Mourinho. The criticism of the referee in Barcelona and the alleged tapping up of Arsenal's Ashley Cole have resulted in critical newspaper headlines. He's got an extraordinary appetite for confrontation. That is, that is one thing I've never seen before. Um, people have compared him with Brian Clough. Uh, but even uh, Brian Clough you know, didn't want to fight everybody all the time, particularly in Barcelona with uh, the business of Anders Frisk, the, the, who's the referee who he, whose honour he unfairly impugned. I wish Mourinho had apologised for that. Are you a bad loser? Yes, I'm a bad loser. Yeah. Was it hard to cope when you didn't quite make it against Liverpool in Champions League? I mean, you've won pretty much every trophy you've entered for the last three or four years. Yes, was, um, was easy when I don't know the goal was not a goal. Mm. It was easy. I, 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 I got it with respect for them, for Liverpool. I, uh, I shake every hand. I wish luck to, to all of them. I got it as a, as a football man who understands that you cannot win every time and you have to lose. When I saw television, I couldn't, I couldn't believe. And it and was, was hard to, to live with it. And especially hard to live with it and close the mouth. It's, <laughs> for me, it's very hard to close the mouth. When, when I'm not happy, it's very, very hard. <laughs> You've come a long way um, since the days that you were in Barcelona. And as the famous quote, who's the good-looking kid with a granddad when you were with Bobby Robson? You must be very proud of what you've achieved. Have you surprised yourself? It was too soon, too quick. I was, I was never thinking it could be could be too quick, you know. I was, I was completely sure of my success in the Portuguese football. I know I could make the difference. I know the reality, I know the players, I know the teams, I know the managers. So I was preparing myself and I know when I go there, quick. But I was thinking of Portuguese champion, Portuguese <laughs> cup, being the best club, but with a cup, Champions League, Chelsea, yeah. was, was too quick, was too quick. But I, I think I was, I, was, I was mentally ready for that. And what's next? You signed a, 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 or agreed a long-term yeah, contract five. with Chelsea. The ambition now, world domination, is it? Yes, it's, it's, it's win and repeat and, and repeat. Is football the most important thing in your life? No, 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 no. No, no. As you. And Family? As, yes, as every father, I think. Just I check. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's fantastic, you know. Yeah. It's fantastic. And we've not seen the last of the special one. There's more to come. <laughs> I'm not a special one. I'm not a special <laughs> one. I was under pressure. You put me under pressure when I arrived. <laughs> I, was, I arrived here, you know, European champion, you know. I arrived here one, one week later. So I think the European champion is arriving. You don't respect me. <laughs> you put me 50 difficult questions and can you succeed? And are you ready for this? And are you ready for that? And I was thinking, what is this? I'm the special one. And you never forget it, what I told you.
started right from the street. I'm European champion, so I'm not one of the bottle. I'm a, I think I'm a special one. How did the, um, the Chelsea move come about? What first attracted you to the club owned by the billionaire the Abramovich? In, in, in my hands, uh, Chelsea and a big Italian club. And the next day of Champions League final... Can I ask you which one? They have a manager now. Okay. I think it's you not don't have to answer. Yeah, it's not <laughs> difficult. They change manager every season. Okay. I know. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, I had, I, I had to think. And I met um, uh, Peter Kenyon, Eugene Tenenbaum and Roman in, in Monaco. And I, I like very much what, what they told me. No one could ever have been quite prepared for the phenomenon of Jose Mourinho. He is a big character. He's very confident. He's a jewel in the crown, you know. Far too good looking to stand next to me. I think he's been a breath of fresh air to the uh, Premier League. He has brought magic. He's probably the only man I would leave my husband for. And he's probably the only man that my husband would leave me for. Something that this country maybe hasn't seen so much of. Almost a year ago today, Jose Mourinho was hired by Chelsea owner Roman Abramovich to win the medals to justify the millions. The image of Mourinho is one of an ambitious, cunning and at times arrogant man who would stop at nothing in his drive for success. But what's he really like behind that suave exterior? I've come to Chelsea to try and find out. Thanks for coming. Great to see you. Congratulations. Thank you. Not a bad start this no, season. Not a bad start. And the interview, difficult? No? Is it? About you. You know about you. Chelsea have confirmed tonight the departure of manager Claudio Ranieri. Porto's European Cup winning coach Jose Mourinho is the overwhelming favourite. Mourinho is understood to be in a Porto tonight and is planning to fly into London tomorrow. Jose Mourinho took his first steps in Premiership management today and immediately... Nervous. I'm an angel. He had something about him where you thought immediately Tablo was going to love this guy. I arrived here with my ego. <laughs> <laughs> he's amusing, he's charismatic. You know, he cracks good jokes. <laughs> he kind of sort of oozes power. You don't know me. You know me from half an hour every week. I'm not interested in myself, in my image, in what people think about me. You want that, not me. No faces that I say, I don't like that face or I don't speak to to this paper or to this television. Well, I think the press have fallen in love with Jose Mourinho because he gives as good as he gets. The press doesn't love me so much. But, but uh, now, forgive me if this isn't just not very British. Do you think you're misunderstood? But the prospect of, of the future, very objective. Uh, Chelsea is not the best club in the world. Chelsea won not a, a Premiership for 50 years. We want to win. We want to repeat. We want to create conditions for the club to be best club in in country, best club in the world. Big ambitions and. Uh, do you want to be part of, of it? And because it was the first meeting I had, and because I like so much the way uh, they approached me and they proposed me a future with Chelsea, I told to, to George Mendes, uh, forget, I, I, I want to join him. Marina crashed into this country like some sort of foreign asteroid. I'm always confident we have a top manager. He does enjoy being an actor in the drama. I'm never 